plagues, my dear imps. Plagues are a force of nature that humans really, really struggle to cope with collectively and individually. Wow, what the fuck was that? And individually as well. Um, plagues have literally in the past changed the trajectory of human life for hundreds or thousands of years at a time. Um, shit is bad out there right now with regard to the plague. It is actually dementingly bad. And I just want to say before we get into all this, because it is a bit depressing to talk about, um, that if you're feeling bad about it and you're feeling anxious and panicked and, and fucking shitty about all this, that's okay. It really fucking is, okay? It really fucking is. Um, this shit is not easy to deal with. It is It is really, really not easy. Like, it is hard to, to express the enormity of what it's like to deal with a plague. Even if you don't get sick, even if the people you know in your immediate life, you're lucky and they don't get sick or die, you, you, the people you know, the people around you, the workplaces around you, the places around you, all are disrupted. And this is an incredibly uh, stressful and uh, anxiety-inducing experience for basically everybody, okay? Now, this shit isn't a game? No, actually, it isn't a game. And here's where I'm going to talk about this a little more. Let me show you how little of a game it really is, okay? Because it isn't. It's not a fucking game. Let me just tell you something real fucking quick, okay? Let me just get this article up here, okay? All right? Hold on. Let me get this out real quick. There's a little tweet that I saw that I thought was super interesting, okay? Let's do it. If you're going to trust anyone to know the real cost of COVID-19 in terms of deaths, trust life insurance companies. Now, I don't really agree with that statement entirely. I think that's kind of silly. However, uh, financial statements from life insurance companies actually is a very good metric to tell how bad a situation is because it's literally, you know, you use a capitalistic metric, right? Life insurance companies lose money when people die. They have to pay out. Their profit motives, their reported financial statements, as grim as it is, is literally about life and death. I was there for an online news conference for, for the, the life insurance company industry, and it was stunning. Deaths are up 40% from pre-pandemic levels among working age people. The head of Indianapolis-based insurance company, One America, said that the death rate is up a stunning 40% from pre-pandemic levels among working-age people. We are seeing right now the highest death rates we have seen in the history of the business of the life insurance business, not just at One America. The data is, in, is consistent across every single player in the life insurance business. Davidson said the increase in deaths represent huge, huge numbers and that it's not elderly people who are dying, but primarily working age people 18 to 64 who are the employees of companies that have group life insurance plans through One America. What we saw in just the third quarter, what we're seeing continue into the fourth quarter is that death rates are up by 40% over what they were pre-pandemic. Just to give you an idea, listen up closely, just to give you an idea of how bad that is, a three sigma or one in 200 year catastrophe would be a 10% increase. So 40% is just unheard of. What they're saying is that this represents, as far as they can tell, one of the worst catastrophes that, that this industry has ever experienced. And they're seeing it because employers have to take out life insurance well, not all employers, but many employers have to take out life insurance policies on their employees who are dying and collecting on those policies. Yikes. Okay. 
Now, this is a whole lot of numbers. And uh, numbers are, uh, are useful for some things and not useful for others. So, I wanted to take a moment, real quick, and I wanted to change it from being about numbers to being about an experience that I came across on the internet. And some of you may have already seen this. Others of you may not have seen it, but we're going to read it together. Okay. So bear with me because this is, this is going to hit you. If the numbers aren't getting you, some people are numbers minded. Other people's aren't many people aren't, uh, if the numbers didn't get you, I think this might make it clear to you what we're dealing with right now as we enter the most severe spike in infections that has ever happened since the beginning of the pandemic. That's right. It's worse than it was when you were scared about it last time. Okay. I am a New York City public high school student. The situation is beyond control. This is by Josh Gordon's burner on the New York City subreddit on Reddit. Now, this has been upvoted quite a lot, and this is a student talking about his own experiences with school recently. Let's listen in, and let's hear what they have to talk about, okay? And we're going to, don't worry, you know I don't just leave us hanging on doom or anything like that, but these sorts of tough stories are really fucking important for us to have in our brains so that we can actively analyze the world and the things that we need to do to stay well in the world. Okay? So let's fucking listen in, all right? Let's fucking do this. I'd like to preface this by stating that the remote learning was absolutely detrimental to the metro mental health of myself, my friends, and my peers at school. Despite this, the present conditions within schools necessitates a temporary turn to re return to remote learning, if not because of public health, then because of learning loss. A story of my day. I arrived at school and promptly went to study hall. I knew that some of my teachers would be absent because they had announced it on Google Classroom earlier in the day. At our school, there was a board in front of the auditorium with the list of teachers and seating sections for students within study hall. Today, there were 14 absent teachers for first period. There are 11 seatable sections within our auditorium. Three classes were sitting on the stage. Study hall has become a super spreader event. I'll get to this in a moment. Second period, I had another absent teacher. More of the same from first period. It was around this time that 25% of the kids, including myself, realized that there were no rules being enforced outside of attendance at the very start of the period and that cutting class was ridiculously easy. We left, there was functionally no learning occurring within study hall and health conditions were safer outside of the auditorium. It was well beyond max capacity. Third period, I had a normal class period. Hooray! The first thing the teacher did was pass out COVID tests because we had all been close contacts to a COVID positive student in our previous class. Four more teachers would pass out COVID tests throughout the day, which were supposed to be taken at home. The school started running low on tests and rules were changed over time to be to refine to rationing. Okay? To be taken at home. Yeah. Students don't listen or care about that. 90% of the bathrooms were full of students swabbing their noses and taking their tests. I had one kid ask me, with his mask down, by the way, whether a faint line was positive, proceeding to show me his positive COVID test. I told him to please go to the nurse. One student tested positive in the auditorium, and a few students started screaming and running away from him. There was now a lack of available seats given there's a COVID positive student within the middle of the auditorium. They're now planning on having teachers give up their free periods to act as substitute teachers because the auditorium is not safe enough. Classes that I did attend were quiet and empty. Students are staying home because the risk of COVID without testing positive, as they should, and some of my classes had 10 plus students absent. Nearly every class had listed myself and others. Um, uh, oh, nearly every class has listed myself and others are close contacts. As, I think that it's supposed to mean as close contacts. I should note that in study hall and with substitute teachers, we literally ner learn nothing. I spent about three hours sitting around today doing nothing. Okay.
damn guys isn't it sick that we have a system where the state forces kids to go into a place that will give them a disease very easily so they can do nothing do you realize the level of 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 uh societal change that is going on around us so <sighs> there's a lot that i could say about this at this point but i i do want to point that out that our rigidity with which we have built society the the uh total inability for us to adapt to natural occurrences like fucking plague well okay there's more on that but to adapt to health emergencies to natural disasters um shows that the way that we do things right now is not sustainable it's not adaptable it's not even doing anything these kids are going into school and getting sick and for nothing for literally nothing just to be held in a building on threat of getting in trouble Elac Kaval says they didn't give a flying fuck when my classmates died of opioid overdoses in the ongoing opioid crisis over the course of our schooling system. Can't help. Of course, our schooling system can't fucking help with COVID pandemic. I know. Because this really shows what the purpose of the schooling system is. A schooling system whose purpose was to educate students would acknowledge that students being dead is a pretty major uh, uh, blocker to them getting an education, isn't it? But a educational system whose job is mostly to contain students so that their parents can go work. Well, I mean, what do we have right now, right? Students being filtered into disease holes. Why? Not to learn anything. They're not learning anything there. so their parents can go to work yep death daycare sounds terrifying doesn't it well welcome welcome to america this is new york city everybody this is the biggest city in america sounds sick doesn't it all right let us continue with this account okay I should note, here's where we were. I should note that in study hall and with substitute teachers, we literally learn nothing. I spent three hours sitting around doing nothing. I tested positive for COVID on December the 14th. At the time, there were a total of six cases. By the end of break, this number was up to 36. By January the 3rd, when we returned from break, the numbers were already up to 100 as listed on the Google Sheet. Okay. Today, there were 226. This is around 10% of my entire school. As of Monday, only 30% only 30 of whom were reported to the department uh, to the DOE, which I don't know what the DOE is. Uh, department of education. education. Oh, yeah. Department of Education in this case. I kept thinking of energy. I'm like, wait, what? But obviously it makes sense in this case, uh, which just seems like negligence to me. Um, uh, yeah. Okay, but I want to notice another thing, okay? So let's talk about a couple things that are going on here. So first of all, not only do we have the layer of uh, of students being forced to go into school to learn nothing where they're exposed to disease, but I want you to look at the other psychological aspects of this. A student has a, a student in 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 high school, it seems to be. I think they said they were in high school. Yeah, this is a high school. Um a student in high school is having to check every day a bunch of Google Sheets documenting who of the classmates are sick or dead. I'm going to show you a screen real quick, okay? Let me show you something, okay? This is it. The trap is shut. Finish all your business before morning. A new pantomime is being rehearsed at the theater. Infected people over the past 24 hours. 434. Gone missing. 481. Committed suicide. 36 people. Overall death toll. 13,539 people. They've shut down the fund. They shut down the hospital. There's no one left to save. This is a screen from Pathologic. Okay? Every day, 
Now, Pathologic is considered a, a horror game, by the way, and many people consider it, like, such a stressful game that a lot of people don't finish the game. I love Pathologic. And I want to point out that every day before school, every student in this school is being encouraged to go check an end screen like in Pathologic. Here's how many of your fellow students are sick. Here's how many are dead. Here's your, you are currently at risk of this. Here's a bunch of things you have to stick in your nose. Why? Why? Because staying at home is bad? Because don't be lazy? Because you don't want to become a... You wouldn't want to encourage people being moochers, I guess. You don't want to encourage people to sit at home and do nothing. They got to keep working. Always. Forever. Even if it means that you're spreading disease. That is the message that every single student in America right now is getting. That is the message. Go to school because you have to. Because if you don't, we will punish you because we need workers. Because we need people to do miserable tasks or else. And a lot of people, it turns out, are saying, fuck that. Which asks, which brings up a lot of questions, right? There's a fuckload of kids out there in the world, skipping school, suffering in school, not learning anything at all. Who's going to help those kids? The government isn't doing anything. Churches don't even fucking exist in that way anymore. So who's going to take care of... This is, these numbers alone is one high school, one fucking high school. Today, there were 226 students. That's 10% of my school. 10% of a school, that's 2,260 students. That's a lot of kids. And most of them are skipping class. They're not learning anyway. And this machine of public education is forcing them in, exposing them to the disease, and pumping the disease out all over the place. Psychosocialism says, I worked with kids in hospital during this. They weren't having a good time before the pandemic, and now suddenly they have to go to a place where they know they're going to get sick. Yes, it is horrible. It is absolutely horrible and i gotta say there's a small part of me that wants to just sit here and say i told you guys so and there's a whole bunch of reasons why i talk about the problems with things like mandatory state schooling and all these sorts of things but honestly that's not even close to the whole story here that is a part of it there's a lot more going on here than just how we force kids to go to school because what's going on here is a very blatant an obvious example that we have built a society that has no value for human life outside of being a cog at Amazon. And, and I don't know how you can look at this and come away with anything else. In fact, I think everyone sees that, right? I mean, this is just on Reddit alone, and this thing is fucking skyrocketing. People see this. People are coming to see that. How can you look at a school that is functioning like this while Joe Biden literally is saying, no, we're not going to provide any more relief. We are not going to let you go and sit at home. Yeah, that's right. The the senior Biden, uh, Biden representative went on the news yesterday to say, we don't think people should be sitting at home when they're immunized, even though the plague is worse than it's been. The government doesn't care about you, about the people you'd love, 
doesn't care about the kids in New York City. Where's that meme? That meme that says, I don't care about all the kids that starved under co communism or the kids that ate under communism or whatever. That, except unironically, about America. The United States government does not care. We live in a state that is built around an economy. And that economy functions like a god. And that god has demanded child sacrifice and is getting child sacrifice in the form of the, a machine that should not be up and running right now, pumping, ch concentrating children into factory prison-like conditions, infecting them with disease, teaching them absolutely nothing except to be obedient, to walk into the disease hole if you're told to. And I don't know about you, but that kind of sounds like the plot of a Kojima game, doesn't it? Or or a Warhammer 40k scenario, doesn't it? Brim says all the rich kids in private schools are all remote. Well, yeah, that's a thing. But there's a problem too, which is that um, rich people, money can't insulate you forever it can't it doesn't and it won't it can insulate you for a long time sometimes money can insulate you for long enough to ride out a small disaster but what we're talking about is not a small disaster this is not this pandemic is not a small disaster by any means we have been i mean i'm sure you all even see it in your daily lives i know where i am Everything has changed. The stores are fucking falling apart. Half of them are going out of business. All the stuff's not stocked. Can't get shit anymore. Deliveries take 10 times as long. So all those things that you're supposed to have are all of a sudden disappearing very quickly. <clears throat> and again, when it there's there's a thing, okay? There's a certain feeling of awe, okay, of terrible awe that comes from watching humans try to play human games with inhuman things, okay? A pandemic is not a human endeavor it can be empowered by humans of course obviously it transmits between humans but it is a force that is larger than and more powerful than most human constructs and what we are seeing is a imperialistic uh government that believes the only way to solve anything is through brute is through brute force and standing iron strong, never bending, never adapting, never yielding, coming up against a truly unstoppable force. And I don't know if any of you have ever watched a large tree get destroyed by wind, but that is a terrible sight to behold, an awe-inspiring but a terrifying sight to behold. That is what you are witnessing. You are witnessing an empire stand up into the face of a fucking virus and its spine is snapping in half. And that spine snap looks like this. It looks like students being traumatized every day of their life to go in and learn nothing to go sit in a dingy building full of disease where they are taught nothing simply so the system can keep saying no look you got to go to work you got to go to work you got to show up you got to go fucking deliver those amazon packages you got to go flip a burger you got to go you got to do it you have to you have to you got to be a good worker what are you lazy you wouldn't want to be lazy what are you, a moocher? A parasite? 
You wouldn't want to be that. Don't you want to be meritocratic? That's what a spine snapping looks like. And you are all here to witness it. Live right now. Kind of wild, right? Kind of wild to think about, huh? Ah, here's another one. We'll read this one after. Yeah, let's read. We'll read this one afterwards. We'll, we'll finish reading this one. Let's continue reading and then I'll give my wrap up, okay? All right, here we go. 90% of conversations spoken at school by students are about COVID. It has completely taken over any function of daily school life. And by the way, I feel like I think about COVID a lot. Doe and Fawn can probably tell you that I'm pretty anxious about COVID relatively frequently because I'm very worried. You know, I have a couple of people that we live in the same house. I'm worried that it would spread between us. We've been very, very careful. We've been incredibly, uh, in, in, we've been incredibly, incredibly careful to not uh, expose ourselves. But that's stressful to me. Can you imagine being a kid in high school and all that you can ever think about all day when you're supposed to be at the place of learning is the disease that's killing you and your classmates. All because politicians are too afraid. Not too afraid. That's not even correct. They're not even too afraid. But because they've made a decision to put the economy over you. Let's continue. One teacher flat out left his class five minutes into the lesson and didn't return because he was developing symptoms and didn't believe it would be safe because he was afraid to spread it to his class. I've been adamantly opposed to remote learning for a while and thought that it was overall an unmitigated disaster for the learning and mental health of students. At the present time, however, schools cannot teach and function well enough in person. We must go remote. I should note that I wrote this on Wednesday. It's now Friday. I've removed the name of my school as it made me uncomfortable sharing the information, but I'll say it's a specialized high school with 2,000 students, by the way. That's huge. Uh, this is occurring everywhere. I'll probably reveal it in the comments, but I prefer not to be in the body of the post. I'm not trying to damage the school faculty or teacher staff. They're doing their absolute best with the cards they've been dealt. All students are very appreciative. It's difficult for everyone, and teachers and staff are remaining as safe and supportive as possible. This is not a problem with teachers or students or administration. This is a problem with our political system. This is a problem of politics. This is a problem of society. This can't be blamed on teachers. This can't be blamed on individuals. There are decrees being made about this by politicians, by people like Joe Biden, by people like, who's the current guy? Uh, Garcia, is that the current, what's his name? Uh, Mayor Garcia, isn't that his new name? No, Eric Adams. I'm thinking of somebody else. Who am I thinking of? Why am I thinking of Garcia? Who's that? Which city is that? Anyway, Eric Adams. Am I thinking of Portland? I don't know. I can't remember. Anyway. Update. 40% of teachers are out today. This was updated today. 40% of the teachers are out today. They can't even take attendance because it's impossible to do attendance. You can sit anywhere in study hall, one chair apart. So what I want you to realize is that New York, a New York specialty high school has essentially become a COVID detention center. Okay. We got another one here. I don't know if this is from the same person. Let's see. No, this is from somebody else. Here's another one. I'm not in New York City, but here's a picture of what's going on in the middle school I teach in. I don't know overall numbers, but six out of the 31 students in my homeroom are home with positive cases. Two out of 31 of these students have already tested positive and showed up in school today. I have a fever under 100 and a vicious cough, and I've tested positive on an antigen test. I'm out of sick days, though, and so I'm being required to keep teaching until I receive a positive PCR test. I took a PCR test last Thursday. I just got an email saying they didn't get to it, and the sample is too old, and I need to make another appointment. 
The fastest appointment I can make is for January 14th. I get one free period per day to plan and grade. I'm covering someone else during that period. I have 30 desks and a combined 2.5 classes. There are currently 62 students in my room. We tried to take the overflow and put them in the cafeteria and in the halls, but fights kept breaking out. I'm at a charter school. I have no union and I cannot leave because I'm scared to lose a job that in normal circumstances I love. Roughly one quarter of our staff is out with COVID right now. The district dashboard says we have zero cases. This is because we only report cases if we can conclusively prove that a case was contracted in the building. Only a registered school nurse can make this determination and we have no nurse. Do you understand that this is a story all across the US? Since this pandemic started, there have been multiple states who specifically took action to try and downplay the danger of this virus, such as in putting in rules like this, rules that say you, could, you, you can only consider it a positive case if it's sustained within the building, even though that's a, that is a legal definition that does not match the physical definition. pretty fucked right so this is proof that COVID is underreported in young demographics um okay let's talk about something here okay um there are a lot of areas in which we don't have information because of stuff like this are they vaccinating kids in our country? There's no federal policy. It's all state-based. Some states are, other states aren't. So the answer is maybe. Maybe. People I know, in fact, someone very close to me took a COVID test five days ago that's supposed to be a 24-hour return COVID test. The results have not returned. Testing facilities, state-run testing facilities, can't get the tests done. They can't get all their tests done anymore. So people can't even know if they're positive. What we are witnessing, like I said, is a spine-breaking event. Okay? And again, that spine is made out of children and old people and workers and you. You have a rapid test pending for weeks still hanging. Yep, a lot of people. The problem is people have given up. Our state still, our state is in the middle of a surge and has just decided to not even bother going back into lockdown again. Abe Y says the, the state run testing facilities are shutting down all over and the load is being pushed onto pharmacies. Yep. Yep. So it's a sad state of affairs. And uh, if if we're completely honest, um, I mean, okay, let's start over again. Um, wait, check out the White House page, their statement regarding Omicron. We're making sure millions of tests are going out to every state. Just find out where to get them. I was mauling at it this morning and I'm still pissed. Yeah, exactly. No one can do it. The tests the tests don't matter anymore. The processing capacity is is completely fucked. Every there's so many people falling sick right now. And the what this reveals, by the way, real quick, 
what this reveals is what forces actually perpetuate a society and communities what who are the people that we cannot fun that society cannot function at all without and as it turns out it's not politicians it's not politicians that's for sure those motherfucking politicians have only made things worse haven't they it's not fucking administrators it's not managers it's not mayors Teachers, nurses, delivery people, artists, food, food cooks, um, people, uh, drivers, uh, fucking people who go and do repairs, people who, plumbers who can go fix a fucking pipe when a pipe breaks so that you can wash your fucking hands. Yeah, I'm sure. Exactly, right? I know. We just had it's it's so on the nose, gay fish. It's so on the nose. It's too on the nose. Also, if, uh, Danny says. Also, if anyone's ever worked in an overworked lab, mistakes happen all the time. I've seen tens of thousands of dollars of samples get fucked up because an overworked research assi assistant hit the wrong button or coughed too close to the samples by accident. With the load of samples that are currently backed up, I don't even know that I would trust my result that I got back. Yeah, that's a huge. That is a complete. That is a complete breakdown of process and like i don't know if people can fully grasp what a breakdown of this scale looks like i mean they can't i know no one can i can't even no one here can 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 conceptualize the level of this type of breakdown but what we can do but what we can do is take care of each other 10 letter name. I lived in Queensland, Australia. We had zero cases reported recorded in over six months, seven deaths ever. Our border opened up the week before New Year's Eve and we recorded 15,000 cases since then. We have a short supply of rapid antigen tests despite our state exporting them overseas. I thought things were getting fucked here, but this stream has blown my head clean off. I cannot compute what is happening for y'all. 10 letter name. Our, our, uh, the nation of the United States is being snapped in two. And maybe more, maybe snapped in four or six or 12 or 100. The force with which COVID is barreling into our, our absolutely idiotic system is terrifying. And honestly, the only thing that really fucking bothers me about all of it is that the price is not paid by the people who built this shit. The price is paid by the people who are stuck in the machine that was built around them. The price is paid by the people who are already being squished, who are already being exploited. Human insulation for the, the politicians and the capitalists. Holy shit, that's terrifying, Kulu. <sighs> so we're rapidly, you know how in the past I've talked about, um, you know how past, how in the past I've talked about like stuff like, um, malicious compliance, uh, withholding labor, um, refusing uh, to do things that you're supposed to do, quote unquote, as told by X authority. Um, I've talked about that many, many times, you know? Uh, but I think what we're now seeing is that it isn't even a matter of choice, is it? More and more people are, ha are, are not getting to strategically choose how they fight back against their workplace, but are having no other choice. Die or abandon the work die or lose your job die or get a bunch of demerits from your school that are going to ruin your career forever and almost guarantee that you end up in prison 
That is a very fucked societal situation. That is a very fucked uh, series of calculations that, that kids and workers have to make. Blackburn, thank you so much for the tier one sub. I appreciate it. Appreciate that a lot. My mom is an elementary school teacher. The principal is refusing to do anything about cafeteria workers going maskless and kids are getting COVID. Yep. I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, unfortunately, it's happening all over the country right now because uh, as it turns out, no human structure can deal with something like a virus of this level. Puerto Rican musician says, my friend had all the symptoms of COVID, vaxxed and boosted, works in a clinic and everyone was getting sick. The test said negative, but everyone kept saying Omicron has disproportionate amounts of false negatives. Yes, that's true. Omicron does appear, at least, at least right now, does appear to dodge certain types of tests. So, sucks. And I don't know. It's really hard to say where things are going to go from here, right? I don't I can't predict that. I can't tell you that. I don't fucking know. I know that Lots of people want answers. Lots of people want a, a framework for where things go from here. But how the fuck do you gr how how the fuck do you grapple with what we just read from these students? How do you grapple with um, students have now missed years of education while being forced into places that make them hate learning? We we are going to have a generation of students that despise education in the in in that that despise learning because they've been told as came up in previous debates that school is the same thing as learning that's that that school is the same thing as education we have quite literally a uh a a a a lost generation already bubbling up in our society. And the reason why I'm saying all of this right now is not to make people feel bad, although I'm sure it does because it makes me feel bad. Um, yeah, trans girl Lily, please DM that to me. It's hard for me to check like on the fly right now, but DM that to me. Okay. Uh, the reason why I'm talking about this is, is not again to make people feel bad, but rather to point out something that I think is very important, which is that there are a lot of young people out there who really, really, really need some fucking help, okay? Like a lot, okay? And uh, that's not going anywhere. That's not changing. That's never gonna change. Like that is a fact of our reality. You can't get those lost years back. You can't undo that trauma. There are thousands upon thousands, tens of thousands, maybe even millions of kids now who, whose light, the direction of their life and the way they approach certain things has changed completely. And I think it's going to be very important for those of us who didn't live through that particular struggle to think about how we can help those people be happy because otherwise the result is a a uh is 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 communities of discontent of discontent of pain of violence of sadness They're just going to be a quite sizable generation where they'll have a collective trauma among other things of piss poor school for like two or three years or however long this is going to go on. No, that's that's so down. That's downplaying it because it's not just it's not just school that's getting fucked. It's the entire economy. The entire economy is being restructured under the vision of Jeff Bezos and and Elon Musk and a couple of other ga financier gamblers. Those are the biggest players now. All the small bit, all small businesses are closing. There's there's very few that are surviving. Restaurants are completely fucked. Even chain restaurants are fucked. McDonald's just put out a huge uh, statement saying that they're in huge trouble because they can't find workers. 
and all of their older folks are dying and even the youngest of the boomers are retiring now. So those McDonald's can't find people to do shit. It's more than just it's more than just a a traumatized generation. We're talking about a a generation that is actively like multiple generations obviously are being fucked by this. But we're talking about an entire massive generation of people that are being turbo fucked by their schools. The only piece of hope I have is that this is going to mobilize younger generations to be more politically active. Yeah, some of them will. But guess what? Those of us who aren't in school now, those of us who, who are past that, those of us who've been through the school system, you don't get to just sit on your fucking, f fucking laurels. Those fucking, those people out there need your fucking help. They're not going to become politically active in a vacuum. They're going to become politically active via uh, 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 YouTube radicalization. The only thing they have access to. They're going to become uh, uh, political radicals from the Roblox forums. They're going to become the only things they have access to. Their school is useless. They can't even talk to their friends at school. They're just being detained in school. So if you care about the world then you have to recognize that the Zoomers need fucking help. They need fucking good, care, like loving and actual guidance that's not fucking tricking them into some multi-level marketing scheme or some other stupid business. I know a lot of you out there have skills. But I think a lot of you out there think of your skills in terms of what jobs it can get you. Still, even though there is no jobs market, the jobs market is literally has been nuked from orbit. Okay? There's nothing left. Anything that you thought about as to how you find work in the past, you might have a few little tips and, tr and tricks there that might help you still. But everything else is a complete paradigm shift. And instead... Instead, I would advise you to look at your skills for what they are and for what they can do, okay? For what you can use those skills for to help yourself and to help others to build structures that allow you to protect yourselves and stay stable. Because, as I've said many times, the government ain't fucking coming. It ain't happening. They're making things worse right now by a long shot. I do know a large number of Zoomers are extremely progressive. That doesn't mean anything. That doesn't mean anything in the long run. Zoomers being mildly progressive uh, as they go through a pandemic where the progressive candidate, the most progressive candidate in history, Joe Biden, completely fucks them over, might just turn all of those progressive millennials into doomed out black-pilled Nazis. If we just sit by and do nothing. Yeah, remember when they were trying to sell Biden as the next FDR? And now he's like, well, if you don't sit on your ass. There, Jack. Fucking gotta go back to work. <sighs> Forced vaccination won't fix the problem won't fix the problem. It literally won't fix the problem. It's too late. Vaccinations are important, but forced vaccination is not going to do anything because the people who aren't taking it still aren't going to take it. They don't care. Republicans already think that vaccinations are forced. It's not a little progressive. It's we literally talk about how capitalism is fucking us all over in class. That's good. Keep that up. We should keep that up. I want... I want every single fucking student and zoomer in america to know exactly who it was who fucked them over because it wasn't their fucking teachers it wasn't their it wasn't their their friends it wasn't the fucking nurses it wasn't commies It was a, a, a system 
that worships the economy over anything else. It is a system that says that that says at all times that you must become a the ideal citizen. You must fit into the notch because that is for the greater good, because that is what you must do, because that's what makes you a patriot. That's what makes you a good person. That's how you know is you go and you work real hard every day for the rest of your life. 60 hours, 80 hours, 100 hours a week, breaking your body for what? Because uh, it's, it's good to do? No. Because it lines the pockets of Jeff Bezos, because it lines the pockets of Donald Trump and Joe Biden and, and Nancy Pelosi and all of these fucking politicians, all these capitalist politicians who've got their fucking fingers in every single deal they're cutting, who write laws that say, oh, yeah, 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 no, no, it's okay. Even when there's a plague, there's nothing you can do about it. You got to keep working that human capital stock, right? Don't focus on people here. It's the entire framework. Yes, it's the framework, but we cannot, we cannot pretend that there aren't people actively perpetuating that framework. A frame, it is, it is, it is likewise a problem. Okay. It is bad to both hyper-focus on an individual, like say that all the world's problems are caused by Donald Trump, like the libs do, which is obviously incorrect as we can see. But it is also a mistake to become so abstract that you, you think there's nothing that can be done. We are agents moving around in a whole bunch of fucking mechanisms. And we can make decisions. We can choose to do things that we're not supposed to do. We can think about it. We can find reasoning. We can find tactics, strategies. We can identify who are the shakers and movers that have put us into this state? Who are the people who are making the rules that we have to follow? There are people who run these machines and they have names and addresses. Yeah, yeah, that's true. They do. Isn't that interesting? There are people who build these machines and they have names and, and addresses. Let's see. Let's watch yeah. this take. Let's see how bad this take is. Suppose you think that school closures were a disastrous invasion of Iraq magnitude policy decision. Shouldn't that merit some further reflection? You think this was a policy decision, which of course is a totally decentralized one, equivalent to the deaths of forty of 460,000 people and the destabilizing of an entire region? And do you think parents and educators have not been reflecting? Yeah, I think depriving tens of millions of school children of an in-person education for a year or longer is absolutely on that magnitude. No question. Okay. So Nate Silver is just an idiot. That's uh, simple. So that's just the stupidest thing I've ever heard in my entire life. Like, how am I supposed to respond to that? That's just, that's like a debate bro tier. Like, well, yeah, actually what? Like, I don't know. That sounds like, this sounds like a baby Hitler thing. Like, what the fuck?